Scanner School session number 56, DMR Trunking. Welcome to The Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. So welcome to Scanner School, a podcast that teaches you everything you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. Now, before we start going on to today's topic, which is going to be a real quick one, it's just going to be the three different kinds of trunking that you'll find on uh, DMR. I want to remind you that today's podcast is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is a Unication Apollo and Swiss phone dealer, and we serve the U.S. market. Now, East Coast Pagers sells numeric and alphanumeric paging products, as well as today's most advanced voice and digital voice pagers used by many fire departments. When you purchase a Unication or Swiss phone pager from East Coast Pagers, shipping is included. Now, Swiss phone pagers and Unication G4 and G5 products will ship with spare belt clips. The Unication G1 pagers will ship with a spare belt clip and a spare set of Tenergy AAA batteries. Complimentary programming of your department's dispatch and fire ground are included with the voice pager solutions so you can contact east coast pagers for a custom quote for your individual or department needs again it's eastcoastpagers.com so i want to start off with a really quick review from last week now again last week's session can be downloaded at scannerschool.com slash session 55 and that was an introduction to dmr or digital mobile radio So again, DMR is a purely digital, only digital type of uh, protocol. There's no analog whatsoever in DMR. And that's exactly the same as it is for P25 and NXDN. Now again, DMR is a ETSI standard or the European Telecommunications Standards Institute. So like NXDN, where there's an NXDN forum containing of about 30 members, there's also a DMR Association, that's made up of 40 members. Like P25 and NXDN, there's a proprietary AMBE plus vocoder by DVSI at the heart of uh, the voice side of DMR. So again, that's also why you got to pay a little bit of money sometimes for the DMR for licensing uh, the use of the vocoder. So again, we are uh, able to support P20 encryption on DMR, just like P25 and NXDN. There's a multi-layer architecture, just like P25 and NXDN. And um, we have the three tiers in DMR. Now, again, this is a crash course of what we talked about last week, just to bring you up to speed if you haven't listened to last week's podcast. So we have three tiers. Tier one is a license-free use on the European PMR446 band. Now, again, DMR is a European uh, standardized um, protocol, right, by the ETSI. So a lot of this stuff has to tend, you know, has to go against the uh, or go with the, the European standard on things. So again, tier one is basically like FRS or, or, or M- MURS MERS here in the states. Handheld radio, half a watt, fixed antennas, great for personal use, recreation, something you can use on a lake with a family, or uh, something that doesn't require a, a large footprint. Now tier two builds upon that. Uh, it's licensed for 66 to 960 megahertz on the European spectrum. It's uh, targeted for those who need more, a bit more user uh, spectrum efficiency. It offers advanced features, allows you to use higher power than it would use on Tier 1. It does require, though, to use TDMA on 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth. Now, Tier 3, which is what we're going to concentrate this week on the podcast, is licensed uh, trunked radio. Again, covers the same frequency range, 66 to 960, uses two-slot TDMA, offers, again, advanced voice features, Offers short messaging, limited to 128 characters. Kind of reminds you of the old Twitter, right? And also 288 bits of data in various formats. So let's take a second here to talk about the three flavors of trunking. We have Connect Plus, Capacity Plus, and Capacity Max. Okay, And usually if you're going to look at the scanner and you have a Connect Plus site, you'll see CON Plus. If it's a Capacity Plus site, it'll be CAP Plus. Uh, not really sure what they show on, on a capacity max, but um, you know, we don't have any of those in my area. I just really have capacity plus and, and connect plus as well. So capacity plus. 
Capacity Plus is a single site Capacity Plus or a linked Capacity Plus with multiple sites. You can have up to 15 linked sites in a Capacity Plus system, and you have up to 12 repeaters per site. Now, here's the funny part here. Of these 12 repeaters per site, only 8 repeaters can be voice and data. And also of these 12, 11 can be strictly for data. But you can't have anything more than 12 total. So you can have 8 and 4 or 6 and 6, but no more than 12. So the trick, though, with Capacity Plus, and this is what makes it really different from everything else that's out there, is that there's a REST channel. Now, the REST channel beacons out every X number of seconds with a data burst, just like LTR right, does, and um, NXDN, I believe it's D, does the same thing. right? It just blurts out, it's your home channel, we're still here, here's my heartbeat, yes, you guys are in range, right? just beaconing every once in a while. This is what sets it apart, though. If a user keys up and needs to ha have a voice channel, right? Everybody in the talk group, say it's, uh, you know, Police Department North. One of the members keys up or a dispatcher keys up for Police Department North. Everybody for Police Department North stays on the rest channel. But everybody else who might be on that rest channel goes to the next rest channel in the repeater group, right? Goes to the next repeater in that site. Really bizarre if you think about it. So basically, it's like, I need to use this frequency. Everybody get off of here. And that's what happens. Everybody else goes to another REST channel, and only the users who are part of that talk group stick around and use the resource. Now, if while well, everybody's on the next REST channel, if somebody else needs a channel, well, guess what? They all then go to the next REST channel. So it kind of cascades down. You're pushing everybody off so that you can use the resources that are there. This happens, and it goes basically through the cycle of all the rest channels and then loops back down again to channel one again. So that's kind of how it works. Now, if you are, you've kicked everybody else off the rest channel, you're using the, you're using the repeater. When you let go, you then join everybody on the new rest channel. You, people don't come back to the rest channel. You join them on the new one. So it's a little bit backwards from what we're used to when we talk about trunking. So you got to remember capacity plus is the oddball here. There's a rest channel with capacity plus. Everybody's on a rest channel until somebody needs to use the voice channel. And then everybody's got to get off of there and go find a new home. They get evicted from the rest channel. So that's an easy way to remember the capacity plus. It's the only one in, the, in this book that's going to operate like this. Okay. So it's a little weird, but that's how it works. Now, again, Capacity Plus also supports um, dynamic trunking, does not require a controller. Okay, so that's Capacity Plus. Okay, we'll be right back. So many people ask me about programming scanners and what software that I use when it comes to programming. Now, I am a huge fan of the Butel software. I've been using Butel uh, since the 785 or 780 XLT days, and I'm hooked. Every scanner that I own, and I own a lot of scanners, every scanner that I own that Butel makes software for, I have purchased that piece of software. It's just something I automatically gravitate towards when I buy a radio, and it's I almost you know budget for it in there. So uh, from the Uninin Home Patrol 1 that I own, the 436, 536, the SDS-100, um, the the Pro 106s, my BCT8s, my XT lines, some of the Radio Shack stuff I own. I'm, I'm trying to remember, you know, the night uh, 2096s. They have software for pretty much everything that's out there. So if you go to scannerschool.com slash Butel, that's Bravo, Uniform, Tango, Echo, Lima, scannerschool.com slash Butel, that will redirect you over to the Butel website, but it will keep our tracking code in place. So if you make a purchase on the Butel website by using our link, which again is scannerschool.com slash Butel, we will get credit for the sale. And that is a really great way to help support the Scanner School podcast, and that comes at no additional cost to you. Now, if you're looking for other ways to help support Scanner School, you can do so by going to scannerschool.com slash resources. Check out our resources page or our support page, scannerschool.com slash support. We definitely appreciate your help in keeping Scanner School going. Okay, so we just finished talking about Capacity Plus. 
Let's talk about Connect Plus. Connect Plus is a multi-site network. You can have up to 250 sites on a Connect Plus system and 15 repeaters per site. Now, Connect Plus has a fixed control channel. So when you stumble across it, you're going to know you're on DMR by just listening. You know, you'll hear it. You're going to when you listen to these things in analog, you're going to you can hear the difference between EDAX and, and, and Motorola Type 2, P25, NXDN, DMR. You, you get it. You kind of gain a hearing for this. But again, too, if you have a radio or a scanner that um, is does DMR, once it locks on, it's, it's going to know right away what it's doing. So, again, there's a dedicated control channel. So this is more in line than what we're used to when it comes to trunking. Uh, it does support GPS, text messaging, man down alerting. And it's really cool too because you know you can see um, if you run software like like DSD plus and there's mapping software, you can start seeing where things are located on a map. It's, it's really cool to be able to see that as well. So again, Connect Plus has a fixed control channel. It operates more on how we're used to with the, with trunking where um, you know somebody needs to control, somebody needs a voice channel and they go over to a voice channel under a sub time slot, right? Because we're talking about TDMA here. So they either go to time slot one or time slot two. And then they'll come back to the control channel and wait for further directions, okay? So Connect Plus operates with dynamic site assignment. So only the resources that you need are what's going to be used. So if you're on, say, the east site, and all the users that are in that talk group are on the east site, and when you key up, only that talk group is only going to show up on the east site. It's not going to be simulcast on north, south, or west, freeing up those resources on those repeaters. So it helps to really, um, you know, get the best bang for the buck when it comes to using your licensed resources that are out there. Now, you do have automatic site roaming. So if somebody were to go into the north site that belongs to that talk group, they would automatically reselect into there. Um, and then the bridge would bridge the gap when it comes to talk groups. So again, the upgrade to or, or building up from Capacity Plus is Connect Plus. It allows for larger networks, uh, a little bit more functionality. Now, unfortunately, though, Connect Plus has been discontinued by Motorola, and it's been replaced by the Moto Turbo Capacity Plus. Now, again, Moto Turbo, that's the Motorola trade name for DMR. Now, Capacity Plus, this is the third... Uh, third part here when it comes to DMR trunking. Capacity Max is fully compliant with DMR Tier 3 standards. Okay, so it's the only one that's fully compliant. So just like Connect Plus, Capacity Max can support up to 250 sites with 15 repeaters per site. You can have voice and data communications up to 15 sites at a time, plus up to six data revert sites per repeaters per site. Just again, like Connect Plus, Capacity Max has a dedicated control time slot uh, per repeater. A secondary controller, secondary control channel may be added for additional capacity if you need it. And just like Connect Plus, it supports GPS and text messaging and whatnot. Okay, so what do you need to know when you program your scanner for either a Capacity Plus, Capacity Max, or a Connect Plus system? Well, you need to know your logical control number. Just like EDAX and LTR, you need to know what the logical channel numbers are and put them into your scanner in the LCNs. Now, because it's TDMA, you're going to find out that the logical channels on DMR come in pairs. So one and two are going to be the same frequency, three and four are going to be the same frequency, and so on and so forth. You'll also need to know the talk group IDs you'll want to monitor, just like any other trunk system out there, or you could put your scanner into an ID search mode. So you don't need to worry about if it's a Connect Plus, Capacity Plus. It, it, it's fine. The scanner just needs to know it's DMR. Now, the trick, though, is you're probably going to need to pay for an upgrade if you're using a Uniden product. So for the Uniden BCD436HP, the BCD536HP, the SDS100, the BCD325P2, or the BCD996P2, these all require paid upgrades uh, and then you have to enter in the software key using your keypad in order to listen to DMR. So include that in with the uh, purchase price of the scanner. I believe it's about 50 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Now, if you have an older GRE PSR 800, Rio Shack Pro 668, or the Pro 18, you can purchase a Whistler official upgrade 
Now, you can purchase the Whistler official upgrade and have your radio upgraded in order to support DMR. If you're using the newer Whistler WS-1080, the 1088, the 1095, or the 1098, you can get a free Whistler upgrade to support DMR. Now, for those of us with the TRX-1 or the TRX-2, it works on DMR out of the box. It's included with the scanner. So again, all show notes and session notes for today's podcast can be viewed at scannerschool.com slash session 56. We will also include all the links for the um, material that we discussed today and uh, also it's our resources that we used to do some research to bring you this material. So before we wrap up, I also want to thank our Patreon supporters, Mark Beebe, Kenneth Fowler, M.T. Bono, James Felling, William Arcand, and Ken Newberry. I also want to thank our brand new Patreon supporters that are brand new for this week. Raymond Hill, Dan, and Brian Southworth. I want to thank all of you for being Patreon supporters and supporting the podcast on a month-to-month basis. Now, part of being a Patreon supporter at the $5 level, you should get the podcast a little bit earlier than the public release. So instead of coming out every Tuesday, you'll get the podcast as soon as available, as much as a week in advance. So if you want to help support the podcast, go to scannerschool.com slash support. And also, don't forget, we're constantly taking your questions and answering them on an Ask Scanner School podcast. So if you have any questions about scanning your radio, how to program it, uh, just finding information about your area, whatever it is that's related to scanning, if you have a question, I'd like to answer it. So please go to scannerschool.com slash ask, and we will answer your questions as soon as possible. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this podcast by going to scannerschool.com slash subscribe or take your phone out of your pocket if you're listening to us right now using your podcast app and click the subscribe button. Of course, you can also listen to us on iTunes, on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, and yes, you can even listen to us on Alexa. So if you've tied in your iHeart account and you have one tied in with Alexa, you can say, Alexa, play the Scanner School podcast, and Alexa will start playing the Scanner School podcast for you, which is really, really cool. So all right, guys, this is it for this week. I want to say thanks again for uh, for listening to us and for your feedback and your support, and we will catch you next Tuesday for another session of Scanner School. We teach you everything you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE, and I am clear, 73.